Six Things About Islam. In the words of Swiss journalist and author Dr. Roger de Pasquier, the West, whether Christian or de-Christianized, has never really known Islam. Ever since they watched it appear on the world stage, Christians never cease to insult and slander it in order to find justification for waging war on it. It has been subjected to grotesque distortions, the traces of which is still injure the European mind. Even today, there are many Westerners from whom Islam can be reduced to three ideas, fantasism, fatalism, and polygamy. Of course, there does exist a more cultivated public whose ideas about Islam are less deformed. There are still precious few who know that the word Islam signifies nothing other than submission to God. One symptom of the ignorance is the fact that the imagination of most Europeans, Allah refers to the divinity of the Muslims, not the God of the Christians and Jews. They are all surprised to hear when one takes the trouble to explain things to them that Allah means God and that even Arab Christians know him by no other name. 6. Muslims and Jesus Misconception, Muslims hate Jesus There are many similarities between the historical reference of Christianity and Islam. Many people are amazed to find out that according to Muslim belief, Jesus is one of the greatest messengers of God. One cannot be a Muslim without believing the virgin birth and the many miracles of Jesus Christ. Jesus is also mentioned in many verses of the Quran and is often used as an example of good virtue and character. However, the main difference between Christianity and Islam is that the Muslims do not believe that Jesus was God. 5. Islamic Jihad Misconception Jihad means to fight for the sake of God. The true Arabic meaning of the word jihad is struggle. However, in Islam, it is often used to describe the striving in the way of God. There are many forms of jihad, but most important ones are jihad al-nafs, jihad against oneself, jihad belizin, jihad by being vocal, jihad bilyad, jihad by using action, and jihad besaif, jihad by using the sword. Each jihad is ranked differently, and it was reported that Muhammad returned from a battle and said, We have returned from the lesser jihad, going into battle, to the greater jihad, the struggle of the soul. This means that a Muslim struggling against himself and his soul is more important than the jihad of going into war. Another misconception is that only when a person dies in war does that person become a martyr. This is, however, false, and it is believed that anyone doing anything for the sake of God and is killed becomes a martyr. A person who dies while performing pilgrimage in Mecca, a woman who dies while giving birth, or even someone who dies in a car crash while he was on his way to the mosque are all considered martyrs. 4. Muslim Savages Misconception, Muslims are savages and barbaric during war. Quite the contrary, when it comes to the conduct of war, there are eight rules that every Muslim army must obey. 1. Do not commit treachery. 2. Do not deviate from the right path. 3. Do not mutilate dead bodies. 4. Do not kill children. 5. Do not kill women. 6. Do not kill aged men. 7. Do not harm or burn trees. 8. Do not destroy buildings. During the Crusades, when Saladin defeated the Franks, he honored the defeated Frankish army and supplied them with food. And during the Third Crusade, when Saladin's enemy King Richard fell sick, Saladin sent him a gift of fruits and horses. 3. Women's Rights Misconception, women have no rights. The image of a woman wearing a veil from head to toe, a woman who gets unfair justice, or a woman who is not allowed to drive, is an all too familiar notion when it comes to women treatment in Islam. And while there are Muslim countries in the world that do implement many harsh rulings against women, this should not be portrayed as Islamic law. Many of these countries have cultural differences that go against the teachings of Islam. It should be noted that during pre-Islam Arabia, women were used for fornication only and had no independence. The birth of a daughter in a family was considered humiliating, and the practice of female infanticide was uncontrolled. When Islam came back to being, verses in the Quran condemned the practice of female infanticide. Islam gave back many human rights to the women, and Muhammad's was even reported saying that women are the twin halves of men. A Muslim woman is allowed to reject and accept any suitor for marriage, and has the right to seek divorce. There is nothing in Islam that forbids a Muslim woman from exiting her house and is allowed to drive. Also, in regards to education, a woman is obligated to seek knowledge and it is considered a sin if she refuses. 2. By the sword. Misconception. Islam was spread by the sword. 
Historian Delacio Leary states, History makes it clear, however, that the legend of fanatical Muslims sweeping through the world and forcing Islam at the point of the sword upon conquered races is one of the most fantastically absurd myths that historians have ever repeated. There is no record in history that shows people forced by sword point to convert to Islam. When Islam spread through countries, they would set up private churches and synagogues for the non-Muslims they were governing, and because of the good treatment they had received, they themselves would convert. If one considers the small number of Muslims who initially spread Islam to the west, all the way from Spain and Morocco into the east from India and China, one would realize that such a small group of people could not force others to be members of a religion against their will. It is also interesting to note that when the Mongols invaded and conquered large portions of the Islamic Empire, instead of destroying the religion, they adopted it. One. Islamic Terrorism Misconception Muslims are terrorists This is by far the biggest misconception of Islam, given unfairly by stereotyping and the public image that the media gives. Has anyone else noticed how when a specific group of people attack another group of people it is labeled as a hate crime, but when a Muslim opens fire on anybody it is quickly regarded as terrorism? Many political dictators and officials or extremist groups use the name of Islam as a strategy to garner followers and attention when many of their practices go against the true basis of Islam. The media has also portrayed Islam as a cult or a club where if you join you become a terrorist and that is now part of your agenda. However, all over the world people practice Islam in the true form and use it as a way of life. There are many verses in the Quran that go against the idea of terrorism. Some of these verses include Fight the way of Allah, those that fight you, but do not transgress limits, for God does not love transgressors. This basically means do not fight except in self-defense, and even in doing so, do not go beyond defense. Another verse states, if they seek peace, then you seek peace. Which means, do not attack people for no reason or kill innocent people. There is nowhere in Islam, whether it be in the Quran or the teachings of Muhammad, that promotes the killing of innocent people.